fair point. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, most people working in uh, actually working on the uh, well, the technical side of Bitcoin or even just to ask any crypto are wizards to me. <laughs> to be frankly honest with you, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be honest there. But um, I guess like again and again, not to like recycle questions I've asked uh, to other people, but I suppose now that we've kind of gone down this uh, this this sort of route where, where we're talking about uh, like. The, the build of, of Bitcoin or the build of Monero and, and layers. Um, hmm. Hmm. One question that, well, not really question, I guess a gripe. It was one that uh, I think it was John Carvalho. This must have been a few months ago, maybe a month ago that he raised on Twitter where he essentially, hmm. he was, he was frustrated. Uh, he's trying to build some, some Bitcoin related. Uh, uh, I think he's trying to build a wallet and, and other, other things uh, hmm. basically around the Bitcoin environment. Um, and he was frustrated with basically that saying that the core Bitcoin core devs were implementing too many new features. And essentially oh. every time these changes are coming in, he's get, he has to, it then completely sets back his development of the wallet app and he has to keep starting again and starting again from different points hmm. and it's causing him setbacks. So he was pretty upset by that. And I can understand that. Um, and he was basically essentially saying that, you know, Bitcoin core needs to kind of concentrate on making the Bitcoin software and everything around it as lightweight and as dumb and as simple as physically possible. Mm. Um, mm. Now they have done a good job of actually speeding everything up because I saw someone the other day comparing. Mm. I think mm. it was Bitcoin Core versus I think the real Bitcoin or something, where there's <laughs> side pro where it essentially is like the original Satoshi, and it, and it was so slow compared to what it yeah. is now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't know. I didn't know if kind of what your thoughts were on that, where you sat on that, whether you, and, and again, not to sort of try and ask you to criticize, you know, Bitcoin Core devs when at the end of the day they're doing it pretty stand-up job but um i guess i didn't know where you stood on that sort of argument of hey when do we stop like constantly upgrading and actually just make it really really basic and start concentrating yeah. on lightning or uh, others yeah i know what you mean i think this this the, the problem i have with answering that question is i think there's two different kinds of complaints that 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 you could have one of them is is about like adding new features at the protocol layer things like taproot right and I think at that layer, I would I would disagree with the complaint simply because I think the pace at which new protocol features are added is pretty damn slow, really. But that's that's subjective. But I think another separate complaint that you might have is things like oh changes to the RPC API. You know the the the, the, the way that you call. Like if you're writing a wallet, you need to somehow talk to Bitcoin Core. You don't have to. It depends on how you write a wallet. But let's just say you write that kind of wallet. Then you might need to deal with changes in the RPC, like the the, the, the language you, you talk to Bitcoin Core in the back end to, to give you the information you need. Uh, that's that's a kind of a more technical question that's specific to developers. And you know, maybe they're changing RPC in the, in a way that they shouldn't. Maybe there's I, I don't really know to be honest. I mean, I remember many changes over the last few years, specifically with like the Wallet API. I'm not sure if they were that big of a deal. So I think overall, on balance, I'm not. Really, I would tend not to agree with John's uh, complaint there, but I have heard other people say something similar. I don't think it's a completely unreasonable statement, you know. That, but the, the idea that, 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 that perhaps what's under the hood there is this, this whole thing about ossification, which is a term that, you know, I, I suppose people started talking about it maybe three, four years ago. And, and I, was, I was definitely one of those that's in a camp that says, we need this to, to ossify. And there's other people who say, A, it's ridiculous because it's just not, you know, it, it, we're not there. It's not ossifying that yet. There's, there's, it needs to be changed in various ways. And some people just don't think that's a valid concept. But I think it is a valid concept because fundamentally, if you want to trust a currency, you need to know that, you know, you go to bed and it's a bar of gold. You don't wake up, it's in a bar of aluminium or something, right? It's supposed to be one thing, right? And, of course, little, little additional features like taproot, don't really fundamentally change it because at the base you've just got this blockchain humming along and there's transactions going in and out it doesn't really change it but you don't want big changes i think um and so you probably do want things to slow down it, it, and, and isn't it true that they are slowing down i mean it seems that way to me i just wanted to know what impact uh taproot will have on coin joins and mm. coin swaps and pay join yeah okay well all, all of them okay so with the basic style of coin join that is implemented today that's the style of coin join where you have multiple outputs of the same value and you you get obfuscation from the fact that that you know outside observers don't know which which output belongs to who so for those the impact of taproot uh, it's something I'm going to need to look into in the next few months, but I haven't really started yet. But as far as I'm aware, there's there's very little impact there, either positive or negative. Um, but I suspect we're going to find that 
CoinJoin implementers want to move to it fairly quickly. This, this is actually debatable. Uh, we want to, we want a big anonymity set, you know, and, and we want to share it with as many different applications as possible. And I think Lightning is probably going to lead the way on that. But it's in, it, well, my, my, my main point there is I don't think it's a very interesting story, Taproot, with regard to, to, to standard CoinJoin. Because standard CoinJoin doesn't use interesting scripts. It doesn't use backouts. Um, an interesting thing about CoinJoin, which I think maybe some people don't realize, is that unlike, although it is a smart contract technically, because it's a bunch of people getting together and making an agreement where they don't have to trust each other. Uh, it's a very simple kind of smart contract, and it doesn't require like a backout clause or anything like that. So it doesn't really do the main thing the Taproot is designed to do. Um, now, the Schnorr signature aspect at the moment is not going to mean very much at all either. It'll, it'll shave off a few bytes, but that's it. Um, now, CoinSwap, on the other hand, is a very different story because Schnorr specifically, which is people sometimes forget, is part of Taproot. The, 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 the Taproot soft fork is the, the Schnorr signature um, in it. And that makes CoinSwaps a lot more elegant. Uh, a lot better, in fact. And I'm not saying necessarily that I know like Belcher's project, I'm, I'm not exactly sure where he is with the various options. There's these very difficult like judgments he has to make, like do we want to share the anonymity set of the existing uh, ECDSA signature scheme or is it okay to like have a have a coin swap system which is using the new short Schnorr signature scheme? Because obviously what we're trying to do is we're trying to make these transactions as much as possible like look like typical transactions. And we can do that with Taproot. But then we're in that smaller taproot anonymity set. Uh, it's a complicated set of discussions. But fundamentally, if we ignore the whole anonymity set discussion, uh, a coin swap works better with with tap with with Schnorr specifically, not taproot so much. Although taproot might help, specifically because um, what you can do with a Schnorr signature, because of its linearity, you can kind of embed a secret inside the signature, and you may or may not know how. You know, Lightning and other other systems that use atomic swap techniques need this kind of special shared secret between the two parties. Where if one of them publishes on chain, they reveal the secret to the other party. And with Schnorr signatures, you can like embed the signature in such a way that that like if it's Alice and Bob doing the swap, like if Alice decides to broadcast the transaction early, Bob should get his money back, and he's going to get his money back by looking at Alice's transaction and extracting that secret value from the transactions she broadcasted. But the beautiful thing is nobody else in the world is going to know what that secret is or, or that a secret was published in that transaction. It's going to look like a totally normal one. Whereas today, if you did an atomic swap, and you know, in certain branches of Lightning, this is true as well, if one party, party publishes a transaction, in order for, this, for the other party to be secure and get their money back, they have to read an actual separate field inside the transaction, which is going to be very obvious to the rest of the world in order to extract their own half of the money or their own you know, whatever. Yeah, so that's coin swap. Now pay join is really just like doing a payment with a coin join where the recipient produces one, uh, supplies one input. So it's it's like other coin joins. It's a very simple smart contract. There are no special scripts. There are no backout clauses. So therefore, again, it doesn't really imp impact it meaningfully. Um, there is a scenario in the future which doesn't apply with the current Taproot soft fork. And that would be the scenario where there is cross input signature aggregation in, where we have cross-input signature aggregation, remember, in a, in a Bitcoin tra transaction, uh, a lot of the space is taken up by the signatures, which is part of what SegWit was about because it changes that economics. But nevertheless, in terms of bytes, the largest part of the transaction is a signature. Now, Schnorr signature changes that from maybe 72 to 73 bytes on average down to about 64. So it's a small change there. But the much more significant impact would be if we had cross-input signature aggregation, which would mean that, you know, with 20 inputs in the, in the in the transaction, instead of having 20 signatures, you could have just one. So it would obviously make the transaction much cheaper or much smaller. And it would also incentivize coin join because it would actually make more economic sense for 50 people to get together and do a transaction than for each of them to do a transaction separately. So, but that's not in included. And I think there are various technical issues around actually implementing cross input signature aggregation. So I'm not quite sure when it's gonna happen, but I hope it will happen because it'll make Bitcoin way more efficient and it will make CoinJoin much more desirable. You know, personal observation, I've seen that yeah. people, the adoption of um, privacy enhancing tools is not really as big as it can be. Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking, so what do you think would be the reason? Could it be, you know, a UX issue or that? I remember you mentioned that, you know, um, you are 
just basically the same as the average you know person when it comes mm. to protecting their privacy mm. and do you think it could be you know kind of like a lackadaisical attitude towards you know people's mm. you know um perception of privacy and privacy do they actually want to you know shield themselves from the world or could it be you know a ux issue when it comes to you know enhancing their privacy when you know using bitcoin or they're just fine with you know mm. the way yeah. you know, it's a, could it be you know behavioral issue or it's the problem with the tools that they have currently honestly i think it's a bit of everything i mean it's it's difficult right so first of all there's that whole problem of people finding time and finding the um, motivation to actually like claim personal sovereignty at all even setting aside privacy you know like running your own node that's difficult it may even be impossible in certain situations um and then even if you don't run your own node that there's like other ways you could like be more sovereign than just simply handing over everything to a third party turning over everything to a company which is like the default way most people operate you know most people use things like coinbase or something like that uh, so there's that whole thing of like people taking the initiative to take their own responsibility. That itself is the biggest hurdle. Then, you know, the next thing is, well, you even have people who will say, like, who could use privacy tools, but who choose not to in the case of Bitcoin, because they're worried that how it makes them look. They're worried that, you know, if I do a coin join, then when I when I try and sell it to someone else, are they going to think I'm I'm a, a criminal, you know? So if you think about that, first of all, that's, that's a serious problem. But, you know, it's like um, it, it's a question of like be, the crowd you're in. I, earlier I was talking about the technical concept of anonymity set, you know, like when you do a coin swap or a coin join, you want to know you want to know that you're in a big crowd because it makes it more private. And if you think about it, it's all kind of conflated together, isn't it? It's like if everyone used coin join, everyone who used Bitcoin used coin join, then it wouldn't be any stigma. There were, even if you were that kind of person, you would never think, oh, I'm worried that I'm using a coin join. It makes me look like a criminal because everyone else is doing it too, right? So, so like, it's like the, you want to be inside the crowd. And I think it's, it's quite rational and logical to, be, to want to be inside the crowd, to avoid standing out because then people are going to attack you, people, authorities, criminals, you know, whatever. You don't want to stand out. So I think that's reasonable. And then you also mentioned UX. And I think that's a very fair uh, point to raise is that, um, it is hard to, to have UX that is natural and easy and doesn't interrupt people's normal flow. They just want to do a payment. They just want to get some money, whatever. Uh, but if they have to press several other buttons and they have to maybe wait longer times uh, or maybe even the worst thing, that maybe they have to pay even more fees to get more privacy, then they're all, they're all barriers to to people um, getting more privacy. So we're always looking, you know, as, as, as the technical pe community, we're always looking for ways we can introduce tools that have the lowest friction, the lowest cost, and perhaps most important of all, the biggest anonymity set. How can we like extend it out so that this is not a tool that makes you stand out from the crowd? You know, at the moment we haven't really achieved that, you know, different degrees of success, sure, but we haven't really achieved all of that which would make privacy uh, tool usage widespread or, or just default even better. I suppose uh, more and more sort of attempted uh, government bans that are occurring and things like the EU announcing their, well, that was overplayed a little bit, but they're, 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 they're going to try and sort of get rid yeah. of anonymous wallets and things like that. Yeah. Um, that. That will kind of push more and more people probably over time, though, towards privacy because it will kind of be more, more privacy-focused Um implementations and technologies because it will kind of be necessary i suppose um, you're so, obviously an opt you're obviously an optimist <laughs> but <laughs> I, I appreciate that <laughs> yeah as yes, you can tell i'm a little bit uh <laughs> not non-optimistic a lot of the time when it comes to uh, governments but um i guess um something i wanted to ask you actually which kind of uh, swerves a little bit uh, away from just kind mm. of privacy is uh, in the world of uh, Bitcoin, but also, I guess, even in the world of cryptocurrency, as you know, mm. sometimes there's interesting ideas floating around. Um, is there anything, I guess, what's like, what's most exciting to you right now, like out there in the world mm. of crypto and, and Bitcoin? Mm. Mm. What's kind of on your yeah, mind? Um, well, in terms of, uh, <clears throat> let's say, not, not the super techie stuff, but just like the real world usage i'm i'm very excited by by lightning i i have been since like early 2018 um you know i was i was <clears throat> running lightning and even coding a little bit i did some lnd coding work um and just messing around with lightning buying things um even as early as like early 2018 and it was it was 
really fun then and it's I think especially the last few months I'm getting especially like more positive vibe about it now like there seems to be even more initiatives on on, on how to use it and the thing is I've always thought lightning was kind of kind of like a quite imperfect in in many ways there's a lot of rough edges there and it's a very complicated protocol I think I think it, I always saw it as being likely to succeed in some sense because because of um, because of that you know I hate being like Sil Silicon Valley talk or whatever but you know that 10x effect you know it's like a, you need something to be just like not just better but it needs to be a ton better and I think maybe a lot of people early on didn't really believe that was going to be going to be the case but it is in my opinion already the case I use Lightning regularly for real payments. Um, uh, not just not just with bit refill but with with other things too um but it's it's actually genuinely useful to me in a way that bitcoin payments were useful to me like in 2014 2015 16. um i mean okay today apparently there's like no demand for bitcoin block space so you could just fire off your payments in bitcoin anyway but i still would i still use lightning when i can because it's faster right and it's more private i mean it's just it's just a, it's that's what i mean about the 10x it's even if you, you know, the, the base design is, is a work of genius, but it's also true that because it uses a game theoretic assumption, um, that that in itself just makes it a bit more clunky. And some people will say, oh, that's okay. L2 will fix that. And maybe, I don't know. L2 is another, another discussion. I certainly understand why the developers are very excited about L2, which by the way is a terrible name, but we'll forget that. Um, so, so yeah, what was I saying? So, so lightning is, is really what excites me because, you know, there's a lot of activity there in, in, in a, in a kind of way that I saw like the very early days, my first, you know, in quotes arrived in Bitcoin, late 2012, early 2013, there's all this craziness going on, all this weird nonsense, you know, but it was exciting because people were trying things out. And I really feel like that with lightning today. Yeah. Is there anything outside of Bitcoin, you know, like mm. the Bitcoin sphere that actually interests you? Probably NFTs, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, NFTs is just kind of funny. I mean, uh, uh, there's not much to say about that. I mean, go, go ahead, you know, have fun. Again, have fun. You know, it's the same kind of thing. That's why so many people are attracted to like Ethereum type of stuff because because they just want to play around with fun, interesting things. And I, I think you at least you've got that somewhat enlightening. We, we can accept the fact that Bitcoin is always going to be somewhat like, it's not so much that it's dull and boring. It's more just that it's dangerous, really. And I've always tried to warn people off from just like using raw Bitcoin in a raw way. I mean, the the base layer, like people, if you ever print out a private key, then you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, so I'm not saying you're going to lose your money, but you're probably going to lose your money <laughs> if you start printing out private keys. Don't print out private keys. And I, you know, the, the, we have a private key like facility in in Join Market because, as far as I'm concerned, concerned Join Market users can take care of themselves. But that's dangerous. Then. Just sending a transaction is dangerous. It just always has been, and it and it and it and it always will be. But we we should accept that, right? I mean, if you if you make a wire transfer of a hundred thousand dollars, there's some serious consequences if you get that wrong, right? So it, it's like that kind of thing. It's a very heavy, serious form of money in my book. And yeah, you can you can buy a coffee with it for five dollars, but it's not designed for that, right? Um, so lightning's for like playing around and having fun. And that's what I was trying to get at. And, um, of course it's not just having fun. People are doing business with it, but, but it's that lower level, like, like at the, you can't put a figure on it, but let's say a thousand dollars and below for $500 and below. I don't know what, but certainly going all the way down to pennies, it works. Yeah. Um, are you asking me, Jerry, if there are other things that excite me apart from lightning? Is that, is that what you were saying? I was trying to. And yeah, not, yeah. not, not NFTs. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm, the, the thing is, my, I divide my time. Honestly, I spend an awful lot of time testing and coding on Join Market because there's a ton of work to do, and there's only a few of us doing it. It's, it's very hard work. But uh, um, apart from like things outside in my life that are nothing to do with Bitcoin, then the other thing that interests me has always been, like I said before, the cryptography. Like I've spent a lot of time studying uh elliptic curve cryptography and and some of the other constructions that you can make um and i'm always interested when people come up with int with like really novel new ways of like playing around with bitcoin scripts and using cryptography like uh, a good example is ruben somson's um succinct atomic swap that was a very interesting construct i haven't looked at it for about a year or, or more but it was there's there's all ideas like that or using like um 
using like adaptive signatures is another thing that's always fascinated me. Uh, and I've, I've been involved with stuff. The other thing I have done, although it's not so much recently, is I've tried to produce like um, reading materials and, and sort of almost teaching materials or guides on the more difficult cryptographic constructs like bulletproofs, confidential transactions, things using zero knowledge proofs. So, I mean, the, the only the, that's for me the real motivation for studying something like elliptic curve cryptography, which allows you to, to it allows you to see how some of these zero knowledge proof constructions work, and they that to my mind they're some of the most revolutionary and um, important developments in technology since you know since public key cryptography was invented in in the late seventies. Let's let's say. Uh, zero knowledge proofs. At some point, you you get you, you're able to sort of encapsulate any kind of computation under very crudely. You could say under encryption. It's not really encryption, but you know you can make it so that people can't see what's being computed, but can only see the output and still and still trust it. And 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 I'm I'm kind of counteracting what I said earlier, right? Because what I said earlier was, oh, Bitcoin needs to be really simple and everything, yeah. But I'm talking, that's the base layer, right? The, what we're talking about here, like we talk about lightning, we talk about zero knowledge proofs, all kinds of weird stuff, adapter signatures. That's stuff like at a layer above. And that's where we can get really creative, I think, at those higher layers.